Hi Tacoma, welcome back to your third grade TV classroom. Today is Thursday, December 3rd, and I'm Mrs. Oslin. As always, let's take a moment to check in with our zone. Think about what emotion you're feeling. Think about your I message. You'll remember your I message sounds like I feel hmm, because hmm. And also pay close attention to how strongly you're feeling your emotion. Take some think time. I'm gonna model my I message with Rafa. Rafa, I'm feeling thankful because we have so many wonderful special guests coming up this month. We had Brad Evans yesterday. We have our superintendent, Carla Santorno, next week. And we're gonna have the Tacoma Fire Department in a couple weeks. Now, you take a moment to share your I message with your learning buddy, someone in the room with you, or with me on the screen. you'll remember that we've been learning to use really descriptive language when we describe our emotions so that the person that we're telling doesn't think we just feel happy or sad or mad, but they, they have a more a, a deeper understanding of what we're thinking. So I said, thankful. I'm not just happy, I'm thankful. I have gratitude. And when we recognize that we're feeling an emotion, not just mad at a four or a five, you could even feel shy at a four or a five, or you could feel happiness, joy at a four or a five, which means you need to calm down and get yourself refocused. And we can do that by going through our stop and stay cool steps. We've also been practicing finding win-win solutions when we have a conflict with someone and using the peace path. Step one on the peace path is we use our I message to tell the problem. We brainstorm solutions such as share, take turns, apologize, fix the problem, or get help. Then we discuss which win-win solution we're going to try and we solve the problem. Now, we have been reading biographies and doing some really important thinking about the subject or the person the biography is written about. We read If a Bus Could Talk, the story of Rosa Parks by Faith Ringgold. And we thought about why Faith Ringgold told the story of Rosa Parks. We read a picture book of Cesar Chavez by David A. Adler and Michael S. Adler and we thought about how the style of biography was written in chronological order. The events were in the order in which they happened and the pictures were realistic and there was pretty much a new event on every page with a date attached to it. We do have done a lot of thinking and forming opinions about the subject of our biographies. What do we think or feel about these people? There are many features of biographies. This is a, a list that you have in your packet and it has a lot of words on it. I'll just pull out a, a couple important things. They're written in the past tense. They're written in the third person, which means they say, for example, Rosa Parks, hmm? Important dates are included, important places, significant people that influenced the subject of our biography are included. There's interesting details. And I want to highlight, hopefully, highlighter, right here, challenges and struggles that people faced are outlined. That's what we're going to do some really important thinking around today. You have been doing independent reading about biographies and responding what you learned about the person, your opinion again, and if you had to describe your person in one word and why. We again looked at the chronological order. Biographies are written in the order that they actually happen and that helps the reader organize their thinking and better understand. It would be really difficult to understand a biography if the events were all out of order. 
We talked again about the different styles of biographies using our book about Elizabeth Cady Stanton and the book about Cesar Chavez. And we learned that our book about Elizabeth Cady Stanton is written more like poetry. The length of the lines and the sentences and where they break is a lot like poetry. The illustrations are not as realistic looking. They're kind of more like cartoons. So the materials that you will need for today, now that we have some of, we're caught up, we know what we've been working on, we have all that work and important thinking fresh in our brains. What you will need are your ELA packet, a pencil, and your learning buddy. Gather those materials and then come back to me ready to go. All right, most of us are ready, settle in. Today, I wanna to teach you that readers of biography analyze the challenges that subjects of biography overcome. That means we think really deeply about what are the challenges and we think about what are the qualities that the subject or the person we're learning about had to have in order to overcome these challenges. And this made me think about the conversation that we had with Brad Evans yesterday, where he talked about even in his life as a professional soccer player, he had challenges he had to overcome. And we all have challenges that we have to overcome. So let's do some deep thinking about our subject today Elizabeth Cady Stanton. We're gonna get back into Elizabeth Leads the Way and we're gonna look really closely about the challenges and think about what qualities she had in order to overcome these challenges. Now, in your ELA packet, you will find this chart called Character Traits. It's page 43 in your packet. You're gonna need that. And page 42, which is analyzing challenges and successes. So open your packet and get these pages out. While you're doing that, we're gonna make some connections between our feelings tree and the work that we're gonna be doing today. When we add leaves with different feelings to our feelings tree, we're better able to communicate more specifically how we're feeling. When we use words that are on this character traits document, we move beyond just describing our subject as brave or adventurous. There's bigger words and more descriptive words that we can use to describe our subjects. So let's go through and read some of these words and keep them in mind and remind ourselves what they mean so we can use better, stronger words, more descriptive words when we describe our subject. So I see adventurous, ambitious, artistic, there's brave on there, bright, brilliant, confident, considerate, courageous, creative, dedicated, determined, efficient, expert, friendly, honest, hopeful, humorous, influential, intelligent, observant, outspoken, peaceful, persistent, passionate, polite, positive, responsible, serious, skillful, successful, talented, thoughtful, unique, and wise. So we're gonna try to use some of these words as we describe the challenges and the qualities of our subject. Elizabeth leads the way. What would you do if someone told you, you can't be what you want to be because you are a girl? What would you do if someone told you, your vote doesn't count, your voice doesn't matter because you are a girl? Would you ask why? Would you talk back? Would you fight for your rights? Elizabeth did. All of these things used to be true back when Elizabeth Cady was a girl. And all of these things might still be true today if Elizabeth hadn't led the way. 
She was only four years old the first time she heard someone, a woman, say life was better for boys. The woman had come to visit Elizabeth's new baby sister. What a pity she's a girl! How could anyone look at a little baby and feel sad? What could be wrong about being a girl? Now, let's think about what character trait would you use to describe Elizabeth as a four-year-old girl hearing someone say that it's better to be a boy? Let's think about the first column, and you're going to fill this out with me, says which person? Well, all of we're going to do the work that we're doing together today is going to be about Elizabeth Cady Stanton. So in that first column, you're going to write her name. The second column said, what are the challenges or obstacles that this person faced? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy the obstacle or challenge that Elizabeth is facing on these pages. Rafa, the obstacle or the challenge that Elizabeth Cady is facing on this page is she's being told that it's better to be a boy than a girl, or easier is the word that the text uses. Now, in this box, go ahead and write the challenge or struggle that you talked about with your learning buddy. Now in the next column, it says, what did he, she, and I added the pronoun they, do? What did Elizabeth do about that challenge? She said, how could anyone look at a little baby and feel sad? What could be wrong with being a girl? What is she doing? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what Elizabeth Cady is doing in the face of this challenge, being told that it's easier to be a boy. Rafa, she's asking questions. She's questioning this idea. Now in this next column where it says, what did he, she, they do? You're gonna write what Elizabeth Cady did. And then the last column said, what is an attribute or character trait that he, she, or they had to help, had to help this person overcome the challenge? This is where we're gonna use our character traits document. The challenge was, she's being told that it's easier to be a boy. She's questioning it. What character trait could we assign to her that would describe how she's able to overcome this challenge. Hmm. I see a couple on here that I'm thinking about. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rafa, I'm thinking that Elizabeth Cady was being hopeful. Why is it better to be a boy? And she's also being very observant. She's paying attention to what the people around her are saying and thinking. Now, you might have said a different character trait, and that's okay because we all have different opinions, what we think or feel about the subject of our biography. In the last box, that's where you're going to write the character trait that you think Elizabeth Cady 
was demonstrating by questioning this idea. Now, let's keep reading and see what other challenges Elizabeth Cady had to overcome. She was 13 years old when her father, Judge Cady, told a woman whose husband had died that the farm she had spent her whole life working on would be taken from her. Without a husband, the law stated, nothing belonged to her. Elizabeth was horrified by this unfairness. She said that the law should be cut out of every book. Judge Cady told her that wouldn't change anything. The law was still the law and only men were allowed to change laws. Preposterous! She decided right then and there that she could do anything any boy could do. Now, what is the challenge or the obstacle that Elizabeth Cady is facing on these pages? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what you're thinking. Rafa, Elizabeth Cady is facing the challenge that the law is saying that women, nothing belongs to women. It all belongs to their husbands. And the law is the law and only men were allowed to change laws. Now, go back to your document analyzing challenges and, and successes and add Elizabeth's name and the challenge or struggle that she faced on these pages that you just shared with your learning buddy. Now, what did she do about it? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what Elizabeth Cady did in the face of this challenge. Rafa, the author tells us that she decided right then and there that she could do anything any boy could do. In this next column, that's where you're going to write what Elizabeth Cady did about her challenge. And then get backed into your character traits document and decide what character trait did Elizabeth Cady demonstrate or have that helped her overcome this challenge. I'm thinking of a couple. You go ahead and share the character traits that you're thinking with your learning buddy. Rafa, I'm thinking that Elizabeth Cady was determined and she was pretty outspoken to saying to her father, that's preposterous. Go ahead and add whatever character traits you were thinking to the last column.
Now, I had planned on us reading a couple more pages together, but we did such deep and important thinking on those two pages that we are out of time. So, your job, well, let's check back in with what we were doing today. We learned that readers analyze the challenges that subjects of biography overcome and decide the character traits that they had in order to overcome that challenge. Your independent work today is to complete the document analyzing challenges and successes, either with the biographies that you're reading during independent reading that you have at home that you could get from the library if you haven't already, or you could think more about Elizabeth Cady Stanton and what you remember from the book that we read, or you could re think more about Rosa Parks and Cesar Chavez and the challenges that they overcome and the character's traits that they had to have in order to overcome those challenges. Now it is time, quickly get through this, it's time for your five minute break. This is your chance for you to take care of your needs, but also gather the materials that you will need for math, which are your whiteboard and marker, your learning buddy, and your counters. Thank you so much for doing such important thinking and writing and reading with me today. I hope you have a great day and I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.
Hi, third graders. Welcome back from your break. You ready for some math? We're going to do what's missing Thursday, and then we're going to start something brand new. So get ready. Okay. All right. Let's take a look. What is missing and how are you figuring it out? Hmm. First of all, what are we missing? Are we missing a whole or a part? Are we missing an add end or a sum? We're missing a part, we're an add end, aren't we? Okay, so what do we know of math about when we have a whole and a part? How can we figure it out? Okay, someone said, well, we can count the space between the two numbers. Okay, is there another way we can figure it out? Yeah, we can subtract. I want you to go ahead, solve it the way you need to without writing it down. See if you can do it in your brain. And see if you can come up with it. Are you ready? Here we go. Hmm. Do you have it? Is this what you got? How did you get it? Tell me, what did you do? What was that, Rafa? Me too, Rafa, that's exactly what I did. Rafa said, well, I started at 90 and I counted up to 128. So from 90 to 120 is 30 and eight more is 38. Done. Did anyone subtract? Oh, so you did 18. No, you don't even have to do 18. Eight minus zero is eight. And now here's my question. Did anyone do this? Hmm. Look at that. I used to do this all the time because I got so into, if I can't subtract, then I can't borrow from the other side. And I didn't think about what was actually happening in my problem. It wasn't until I became a teacher that I realized I was just following a pattern and I wasn't actually thinking about the math I was doing. Take a look at this. Eight ones minus zero ones is eight. Two tens minus nine tens. We need 12 tens. Third graders, look. 12 tens. It's already there. What is 12 minus nine? Three. You just move the one over. It's already there. You don't have to. You can just say, well, I have 12 tens. I'm going to take away three, nine tens and I get three tens. And our answer was 38. Okay. What's missing? A whole or the sum or an add end or a part. What do we have? We have a whole, we have a part, or we have a sum, we have an add end. And we're trying to find the other add end. Go ahead and solve. Hmm. Do you know? How did you know it was 68? Pebble, what did you do? <gasps> Ooh. Pebble said, well, I know 60 plus 60 is 120. And then eight more is 128. So the missing add end is 68. That's using your math brain. That's looking at it and really thinking about what you see, not just following a rule. It's important in math that we know the rules but then we look at what's happening to make sure that it's efficient and accurate. What are we missing? We're missing a part, we're an add end. Go ahead and solve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 98. How do we know it's 98? What'd you do? Rafa said, I did that number line thing again, Mrs. Wally. 30, then 128. Now, this is when friends of 10 is important. 30 to 100 is what? 
70. 100 to 120 is 20. And then 20 to 8 is 8. 70, 80, 90, 8. 98. Nice job, third graders. What are we missing? An add end. Go ahead and solve. Mm hmm. If I'm at 40 and I'm at 228, 40 to 100 is what? 60. 100 to 200 is 100. 200 to 220 is 20. And then 8. So what do we have? 188. Great job, third graders. Last one. See if you can figure it out. Which strategy is going to be most efficient for this problem? Stop and think. Is the number line the most efficient strategy here? I've already got my answer. Do you have your answer? My answer is 413. How did I get my answer so quickly? Do you want to know? Well, I said eight ones minus five ones is three ones. Two, two tens minus one ten is one ten. And then 400, because I'm not subtracting any hundreds. My answer is 413. For this one, this method was faster. Just subtracting the numbers was faster. You have to look and see. If the numbers are really far apart on the number line, subtracting is easier. If the numbers are closer together on the number line, open number lines easier. If you have to regroup a bunch, open number lines easier. You can keep track of that regrouping. Pretty nifty, huh? Well, today, who likes chocolate chip cookies? You see this cookie? Oliver, my son, one and a half yesterday, made me cookies. So I brought one today because our problem has something to do with chocolate chip cookies. Now, before we do our chocolate chip cookie problem, private think time, look at number one. How many equal groups do you see? One, two, three, Four. We have four equal groups. How many equal groups do you see in number two? Rafa says, I see one equal group. Okay. Does anyone see it differently? Oh, Pebble says, I see one, two, three, four, five, six equal groups. Okay. Do you see it differently? Oh, you see one, two, three, four, five equal groups. Hmm. Today, we're gonna to be talking about equal groups. When I say equal groups, what do I mean? Equal groups. Yeah. Pause for a second. I want you to go back and think about addition and how it relates to subtraction, right? When we have two parts, we put them together, we get a whole. When we subtract, we have a whole, we take away a part and we find the other part. They're related, right? Think about multiplication. What is multiplication? Yeah, we have a number of groups and the amount in each group. We have blank groups of blank. And then we get a product. Division is the inverse, just like subtraction is the inverse of addition. So I'm not saying I have blank groups of blank. Now I'm saying I have a group and I'm going to split it either into groups or into so many in each group. And we have to find out how many groups there are or find out how many are in each group. So we're going to study that for a little while. Are you ready? Here's our, it says, what's going on when you divide numbers? Everything time. What is going on when you divide? If I say divide, what are you doing? 
if I was gonna divide these counters that are in this bag, what would I do with them? Oh, I might pull them apart into groups. Okay, so maybe dividing has something to do with pulling apart. All right. Kind of like subtraction, we pull one part apart, but it's different than subtraction. It's equal, yes. We're taking a large sum or group or product and we're dividing it. We're taking it apart into equal groups to figure out how many are in each group, or we're putting it into a number of, we're putting it into like a group of an amount. No, let's see, I did that one, group of an amount to find out how many groups, or I'm putting them into a number of groups and figuring out how many are in each group. So I'm either figuring out how many are in each group or how many groups I have. Shall we take a look? Let's see if we can match my words to a model. Are you ready? Mr. Kevin, can you have the PowerPoint up and my whiteboard, please? All right, so here's our problem. It says, imagine, what are these? They are cookies. I won't eat my cookie in front of you, that's not nice. Imagine Jake has eight cookies. Okay, we could say imagine Rafa has eight cookies. Rafa, these are your cookies. Let's make sure Rafa has eight cookies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What I want you to do is I want you to take your whiteboard and your counters, get eight counters out. And I want you to draw two plates. Rafa has two plates, okay? And I really want you to use counters today. It's really important that you use counters. Mr. Kevin, should I draw that other circle over a little bit? I think so. Here we go. There we go, now we can see them. Okay, we've got two plates. So Jake has eight cookies. And we're trying to figure out how to divide the cookies into two equal groups. So we're dividing the cookies into two equal groups. What does that mean? What do you think? If I need to divide the cookies. Oh, we have a, a word we use. You have your eight counters. It's a word you've known for a long time. I even say it to Oliver. He's one and a half. Oliver, you need to share. We're going to equally share the cookies onto the two plates. So what are we gonna be trying to figure out? How many cookies each plate has? Now remember, it has to be equal. When we divide, it's equal. You ready? How might you do that? Yeah, you can start sharing. Here's one for this plate. Do it with me. And one for this plate. One for this plate. And one for this plate. And we share until we have no cookies left in our hand. Okay? Makes sense. We had eight cookies, and we're sharing them onto two plates equally. If I do this, I wasn't dividing. That's not equal. When we divide, it's equal. Now, later on in the year, we're gonna talk about what happens if I have one cookie left over and I've got two plates. But we're not gonna talk about that right now. But no, it's coming, and there's stuff we do in math for that. But right now, we're talking about just sharing equally, and right now, our numbers are going to share equally perfectly. Jake, or Rafa, divided eight by two. I took eight and I divided it, or I shared it, into two groups. Eight shared into two groups is the same as blank. What do they mean by that? Eight shared into two groups is the same as blank. What do you think they're wanting us to find out? Oh, there's eight cookies and there's two plates. What do you think the question is? How many cookies are on 
each plate. Think about multiplication. Blank groups of blank. How many are in each group? Eight groups of cook eight cookies shared into two groups equals how many cookies in each group? Well, how many cookies are in each plate? One, two, three, four. Now take a look at my picture or our model. What do you see? You see two groups of four. Two groups of four equals eight. That's pretty cool. Do you see how it's kind of like addition and subtraction, how they inverse and go backwards? Two groups of four equals eight. Therefore, eight divided into two groups equals four in each group. So how much is eight divided by two? Four. Okay, Mr. Kevin, go ahead and show our slide big. We're gonna see if we can figure out what they want us to answer. Are you ready? It says one way to use division is to find out how many in each group. Is that what we did? Yeah, how many were in each group? Four. Fill in the blanks to complete the division equation for the problem. There are blank in all. How many cookies did we have in all? Yep, eight, right? Eight on your board. There are blank equal groups. How many plates did you have? Two, write two on your board. You just write it up on the top. There are blank in each group. How many cookies ended up being in each group? Four. Now, I want you to see if you can write the division equation. That symbol, the line and two dots, means divided by or split into. Eight split into two groups equals four, or eight split into groups of four equals two groups. Which way did we do it? Did we do groups of four or two groups? We did two groups and we found out four, right? Sometimes we do it the other way. Eight divided into two groups is the same as four in each group. Okay. How did we know the number of cookies on each plate was equal? Turn and tell your learning buddy. How did you know it was equal? Look at your model. How did you know it was equal? Yeah, each plate had the same amount of cookies. I think finding equal groups shows division because, finish that sentence. Why do you think finding equal groups shows division? Okay, because it's taking a group and separating it into equal groups or dividing it. When something is divided, it means it's separated, right? If you have a topic and a group of people in your class believe one thing and another group of people in your class believe another, you are divided, you're separate, right? So we are dividing into equal groups or dividing into groups of. Hmm. My E is right here. Do you see it right there? That says divide. But the E's down there, when I copied it over, it must have made it a little bit too big. Divide. You are going to work on the meaning of divide for your assignment today. You're only doing page 229. You're going to come up with your definition. What does it mean to divide a group? Show a picture. You might draw your cookies and your plates. You're gonna give an example of dividing, maybe write a little story problem. You could use the cookie problem and give a non-example of not dividing. So when you separate something, but you're not dividing, what does that look like? And then number two says, Oscar draws a diagram to help find 12 divided by three. Explain how his diagram helps him solve the division problem. So what did Oscar do? Okay, tomorrow we're gonna to talk more about dividing and get into dividing into equal groups to find out how many groups versus dividing into groups to find out how many in the group. Okay? I love division. It's super fun.
Did we divide a total into equal groups today? Mm -hmm. We knew how many groups there were. Did we tell how many were in each group? Mm -hmm. Did we answer questions about how many groups, how many each group gets or how many equal groups there are? Which one did we answer today? Did we answer how many groups there were or how many each group got? Look at your model. Which one did we answer? Were we figuring out how many groups we could make? Or were we figuring out how many were going to be in each group? How many were going to be in each group? We wanted to know how many cookies were going to be on each plate. Now, Wednesday, December 9th, we have Superintendent Carla Santorno coming. We're Ms. Oslin and I are gonna interview her and we're gonna learn all about her. Now, we are super excited to do this. So don't miss it, it's gonna be great. And then on Wednesday, December 16th, our special guest is the Tacoma Fire Department, Crew One. They have made us an amazing video about what being a firefighter is like, and what a day in the life of a firefighter is. It's gonna be awesome and answering some questions. So now it's time for our affirmation. Third graders, awesome job today. You did a lot of learning today and a lot of heavy lifting and we are so proud of you. It's important though that you're proud of you. So our affirmation today is I am proud of myself. It's important that you're proud of the work that you do. So I'm gonna go first and then it's gonna be your turn. I am proud of myself. Your turn. Excellent job. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.